Ken Mangum has seen a lot of sunrises on golf courses. Sunsets too. Being the golf superintendent at one of the most prestigious golf clubs in the world requires a lot of time. But Ken loves his job at the Atlanta Athletic Club. One of my favorite spots because you can see number four, you got the reflection off the lake and then all the bunkering up number five. One of the places I like to come and uh, early in the morning and have a little quiet moment. On this morning, he's making sure that everything is ready for the final round of the 2014 United States Amateur. There's even a group from Japan who have come to the event to learn from Ken and his crew. Ken's knowledge of golf course management and how to grow grass is respected around the globe. It's fun to help people. Uh, we learn a lot here through experimentation yeah. and trying some new things, and, and it's good to help be able to pass it on. Ken's future success as a golf course superintendent started in Alabama. As a young boy, he loved growing and selling vegetables. And when his family moved from his grandfather's farm to a nine-hole course called Indian Oaks, Ken and his brother landed jobs at the club. I, th I think his desire for golf has always been on the growing side. Our grandfather was a farmer, and I think that's where we got our love for growing things. Ken needed to learn about the golf business, so he went to Lake City Community College in Florida. In addition, he also received a lot of training and inspiration from legendary superintendent and Georgia Golf Hall of Fame member, Palmer Maples. He set a great example, and he's still a great friend and a guy that uh, I have a lot of respect for. After college, Ken went back to Indian Oaks, where he was hired as the superintendent. I could do anything I wanted to as long as it didn't cost money. For a time, Ken got out of the golf business to help his wife's family run some restaurants. But it wasn't long before another golf opportunity came along. And for a couple of years, he worked at Mystery Valley Golf Club in Georgia. From there, it was on to Lagoon Park in Montgomery, Alabama. Ken's next opportunity came from Idle Hour in Macon. The day he was hired was an emotional day. I, I took that job on the day my dad retired. He taught us to be the best we could be. He's, he, he never got hung up on what we did, but do whatever you're doing the best. Ken says he loved his time at Idle Hour, so when the chance to go to the Atlanta Athletic Club came along, he had a difficult choice to make. It was not, that was one of the hardest things I've ever done, is have to go tell Brian I'm leaving. But it was one of those things, I just had to go because this was such a great opportunity. Once at the AAC, there was work to be done. So I, when I came in, there was nine hole, nine greens you could play, and they weren't on a consecutive nine. And we've got the women's open in 18 months. So the first 18 months was spent getting things back for the women's open. Since that first big tournament, the AAC has hosted numerous major events. In addition, Ken collaborated with architect Reese Jones on a major course renovation at the AAC. Um, he did a lot of all the selections of the grass types. Uh, I brought my construction firm in, and uh, it was just a great team effort. The Atlanta Athletic Club, because of its history and all this happened at, at the Atlanta Athletic Club and Bob Jones' legacy, mm -hmm. is so important that we both felt that, and, and we devoted ourselves to making sure that this was as good as Bob Jones would have wanted. At the Athletic Club, he worked with fellow Hall of Fame member and general manager Chris Borders, the staff, and the membership to make the AAC a success. Club professional Rick Anderson says Ken has a strong desire to be on the cutting edge, whether it's new varieties of grass or an on-site garden for the restaurant. Ken, you know, with, with forward thinking and everything, he's with the right uh, data and, and everything, he's willing to take um, a calculated risk for something that's going to be even better. I mean, he just flat knows what's going on. Ken has been inspirational to his staff, not only teaching them how to manage a golf facility, but how to maintain a balanced life. Ken has um, taken over 50 assistant golf course superintendents uh, through the years, and those people have now gone on to become golf course superintendents in the industry. I apply the, the things that I learned working for Ken every day in my, in my work life, absolutely, no question, and, and my home life. Ken's a great family man as well. It doesn't just stop when he leaves the golf course. 
Ken says he is blessed with a wonderful family, and he and his wife have enjoyed the many experiences connected with golf. Ken also impresses his grandchildren. Just listen to this text from his daughter regarding grandson Evan. Evan says Papa can get us into the tournament? Does he have badges for us? I said yes. He goes, I'm glad Papa's our friend. You know he's famous. <laughs> Evan is even thinking about following in Papa's footsteps. You had a dream about what? About me doing that, all that stuff. If, if you were to do this someday, who would you ask? Do you think you'd ask him for some help? Yeah, Why? Why would you ask him for some help? Because I, I never been. I'm only eight, so I don't know really anything about grass. Oh, and Ken likes to have fun. Friends say be very wary when traveling with Ken. If you go to sleep, you are very likely to wake up with whatever fingernails can be reached, painted, or toenails if you have on sandals. Definitely a, a practical jokester. He loves to, to play it on anybody and everybody. Up until now, Ken's golfing ability hasn't been mentioned but he takes great pride in a special book full of money and stories. This book is a book of memories, not, not necessarily pictures, but uh, the money I've won playing golf. Chuck Palmer, we gotta zoom in on it. <laughs> Speaking of money, Ken recently did some calculations. I figured up one day, I've administered close to $100 million here through operating budgets, projects, and everything. That was kind of staggering when I, when I thought about that. I always get the sun coming up, shining on the clubhouse. Pretty impressive for a fella who describes himself as someone who can grow grass. <laughs>